Yes. <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting of the Ross Valley Cemetery regular board meeting to order February 12, 2020. Roll call. Gaffney? Here. Kelly? Here. Meigs? Here. Scylla? Here. Forsty? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and now let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we want to adjourn the closed session. Oh. Directors? Okay. Okay, so here we go. We're good. We can be in the open session and there's nothing to report. Nope. Wait a minute. Well, we, may continue. Continue. we may continue the closed session. We may, we may continue the closed session item later. At the end of this change. It could happen. Um, so, uh, before we approve the agenda, uh, we're going to take item 11, and uh, the Finance Committee yesterday decided we're going to postpone that a month. To, uh, make nice charts and pictures and have more discussions. And uh, we have people here who are talking about the ADU issue. So but we have more than one person, and the other person is not here yet. I, I'd ask the board president to consider moving it up on the agenda, but not quite so far up. Are you sure, sure that somebody else is yes. there? Yes. Can, can we can we be loosey goosey at all and say as soon as that other person arrives? Yeah, I'd be happy to do it that way. Yeah, I'd be happy to do it that way. Is that okay? Okay. One, so thing, will, thing, one thing to consider it is item 13, which yeah. is far along the agenda. Yeah. yeah. So, so when, when the other person shows up or we still decide, we'll, we'll, we'll move it up. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, now we have open time for public to raise items not on the agenda or for future agendas. Anyone wishing to address it on the agenda? Oh yeah. Uh, do we are we can we approve that agenda with that? Yeah, minutes? I just didn't hear the part about closed session because I was an insight okay. of the conversation, but as long as you said it. Yeah. We're continuing to the end of session. Yeah. Yeah. May may I hear um, or repeat up the motion in a second for approval. The motion is we're going to move item thirteen up as soon as a person who's expected to show up here arrives. Okay. And we may have a closed session. Uh, continuing. Continuing okay. the closed session. And uh, we're not going to do agenda item. We're going to postpone agenda item. Right? No. With that motion, I'd second that motion. Who, who first came call it? John Good call. Uh, okay. Anyone wishing to address the board of directors? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 How are you? Okay. Anyone wishing to address the Board of Directors on matters within the district's jurisdiction but not on the posted agenda may do so. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. The Board may not take action on or discuss items not on the agenda but may briefly respond to statements or questions by a member of the public. The Board President may refer any matter to staff for further follow-up or elect to have the matter placed on an agenda for a future meeting. Okay. Committee's report out. HR. Uh, the HR committee met on Monday and we re reviewed items that we're going to address tonight. Um, item 14 15 in the <coughs> HR report. Uh, item 14 has to do with uh, three positions that are open in the engineering department and uh, staff thinking about ways to fill those duties without necessarily hiring the exact same job descriptions we had before based on <coughs> need and market forces such as uh, what kind of applicants we have. But there will be more information on that soon we discuss it and later. Uh, item 14 uh, is just about having to change some language as a result of a letter that establishes the law about how when, how an entity can or um, is not able to allow individual employees to opt in to a benefit. So that's item 15, we'll talk about that later. Uh -huh. um, and then we'll review the HR report. 
torque. And the finance committee. Finance committee met yesterday and uh, we discussed uh, current finances, which were fine, and especially had a long discussion on uh, the refunding, the bond issue, with, with an advance refunding. And we had a number of questions, so the staff decided that we would postpone it. We found the agency's finances. Meaning that you, they might reconsider doing it or just provide more information? Um, <laughs> a. Well, we, we, we discussed it with them for 40 minutes with no real resolution, and so we said rather than discuss it for a few hours tonight, let's move it off for a month where it may become more clear as to what we really have to do. The Ad Hoc Facilities Committee did not. No. Nope. <laughs> And so the Central Marine Sanitation Agency. All right. Uh, well, we talked about a couple of important things, one of which is um, a pilot project with South Bay, uh, South Bayside Waste Management Agency. Um, they are a facility, a citation, as in garbage um, facility, and they have quite prop the, the factory, and they are dedicating a lot of their floor space to um, getting um, organic waste, food waste, and moving it out, um, and they have a really large uh, system, very effective, for cleaning it and making sure it's food. So they, they put things through grinders and, and so there's no forks and knives and that kind of stuff coming. And what we're talking about is doing a pilot program where CMSA takes a truck a day, um, although we can turn it back anyway, any day if we don't, we can't, except we don't want to do that, and put it in our uh, anaerobic digesters. Um, it's a matter of mixing, you know, you, you get different energy flow and more methane depending on the mix you have. And we have, um, we're not going to get any more food waste from um, our own marine sanitary, we don't think. Um, was it Ruth's or what was the, uh, the company you talked about that used to give us? Oh, Amy's. Amy's. So Amy's <coughs> used to give us a lot and we're not getting that anymore. So by, by accepting their uh, their um, food waste, organic waste, we can increase our energy production. Um, we're not charging them a tipping fee so for, for a year. Uh, maybe we will at some time. They're going to have about 10 trucks a day. We're taking one. East Bay Mud's taking four. Sunnyvale's taking one. Um, I can't remember who else is taking but It seems like a really great project for us to find out. And, and it's all about the mix. Yep. It's all about the mix. Um, with that, it's very cool because <clears throat> Last year, we uh, put out the funds to buy a mini digester, yep. two 600 gallon tanks on a trailer. <clears throat> and we bought them from a company back east and we trucked them across the country. And our guys at CMSA uh, figured out with all the instrumentation and everything how to install it. And it's really interesting because. It takes 25 days to get the food source into it, and then it takes another 25 days for it to mix appropriately, and it's producing the biogas to really show the efficacy of what they're doing. The problem is that all the literature says you can only have 35% uh, of, um, 30 to 35% of uh, food stuff with all the rest of your stuff before you upset the tummy of the digester. Mm -hmm. And if you have to shut down a digester, that's a couple, two, three month proposition. And that's ugly, you don't want to do it. So we got these little mini digesters so that we could test them. It takes, you set it, you bring it up to 30% and then you run it for 25 days. It says everybody looks happy, all the microbes are really good. Turns out the microbes weren't happy because the eaters that were in it didn't keep it in an exact temperature within a degree plus or minus, so the little bacteria were all dying off and they got an upset stomach. Drain it all out and they found out that the heaters were not appropriate. And so they figured out another solution for that and then they cranked it back up to 30 again, did that. They just, as of two days ago, finished with the 50 days at 40% and they're cranking it up now to 50% uh, of, of uh, food source and uh, we're very excited because if that all works and we continue to be able to get food such like what Doug was saying and 
uh, brew pubs and other kinds of food sources. They add in. It means next year when we put in the one megawatt generator that's 30% more efficient, we'll be able to really be exporting a tremendous amount of, of power out over marine clean energy. And um, the past two months, um, December and January, pretty, uh, January was 100% off the grid. We produced all of our power and sold back in marine clean energy. Um, December was pretty close. And that's during the wet season, and that's when we're able to produce the most power. But with all these other food sources we're talking about, it's, yeah, it's, really, it's really likely that we'll be able to be producing energy year round. That's very exciting. Okay. We had, um, we had two other um, issues where we were putting out bids. Um, uh, the pipes, at, um, some of the pipes that are underground at uh, Central and Sanitation had not been inspected. They're really large ones. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't inspected since they opened in 1985. So we have a professional agreement for $96,447 with uh, JDH corrosion, which was about 66% of the cost of the other bid. So it was, it was 149 versus 90, 96. At the very next item, uh, we're procuring turn, turntable drives for the secondary clarifier rehabilitation project. These are devices, they're, they're, they're pumps, if you will, small ones, but they're expensive. We're buying three of them, but we're only installing one this year, and then we're keeping the one for next year because we're doing these in the three-year project. And that was almost the same thing. I have to look at the, the exact numbers, but it was $95,400, and the other bid came out at about $147,000. Um, this was $141,000. All, this was all in capital. It was in the budget. Yep. So, so on both of those, we, we, we got bids, and we got very competitive bids. For this, and this one was it's just a, it's a piece of equipment. So it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Some of those inspections, in the big pipes, they actually have to send a person in every yep. year. Do we have to do that in any of our pipes where no. we send a person in? No. They did mention they, they have to take it offline before they do that. Yeah, they do have to take it offline before they send a person. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> How I don't want that job. How would you like to work for JBH Corrosion? <laughs> 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 Anyway, sure so that was, that was the, the other thing. I, well, so we got five awards from the uh, California Water Environmental Association Awards, uh, including uh, uh, Sanitary System and <coughs> Safety, plus three first of all, so it's very good. Uh, we're also saying goodbye to our longtime um, uh, Marin County uh, assigned uh, attorney, Jack Gobi, who's been doing a fantastic job for all these years. He's retiring in May. And that was about it. So are you going to get assigned another attorney? Yeah. Yes, we already have. We need him at the next one. Yep. <coughs> okay. okay. North Bay Watershed Association. It was a great meeting. Ben Hornstein, the GM, came to talk about after the fires. And he at the time was uh, in the city of Santa Rosa when the fires started. So he wrote, he came and talked about key lessons. And it was pretty amazing. He said that, first of all, you gotta figure out who's in charge. And I guess you're so adrenalized. There was, you know, some disorganization and chaos. And then <clears throat> mutual aid, figuring out who, what mutual aid you're going to use. And actually electeds also are involved because they need to convey information to the public. So I have a list of certain things that he talked about. Um, I probably need help here. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's sort of it. Oh, the hydrocarbons and benzene <coughs> and the plastic that melts in the pipes stuck to the pipes in up in paradise. So they've had to replace their entire um, pipes and everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas at Santa Rosa, they flush the pipes so they were able to get that all out of there. And there hasn't been any leaching so far because they keep testing. So the water contamination has not been a problem in Santa Rosa. So that was really amazing hearing that. So now there's going to be a whole new way to do pipes. And I think I, he said to go to concrete blocks. First 12 feet. Yeah. So <clears throat> are we sure yeah, I'm just wondering, are we doing that? But I don't think, are we? That's for, um, this is good. So, 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 I shouldn't, I shouldn't so the contamination that. was to the water supply. So it was like the drinking water system. 
because things had burned and then there was a vacuum effect when pressure is lost in the water system and so it brought in the contaminants from the combustion from the burning into the water and it stuck to the pipe like you said um, the, but the pipes don't have to, that's that's a system that can still work the thing that they want to change though was um, the using HDPE as a storm drain uh, pipe carrier because it melts when it burns uh, however, if it's underground, it's not going to melt unless it's connected above ground. And so where those HDPE uh, pipe penetrations in the air next to a creek, those started to burn and then burned underground. And there were sinkholes that were dangerous because this plastic just disappeared. So the solution, as Director Kelly said, was to put the concrete block in about 12 feet. So when it does burn from the creek side, it stops and then it keep burning on into the system. So it was a design recommendation from the wildfire. Thank you, That was very cool. It makes perfect poor, sense. Poor the same thing is we're preparing for the next wildfire, which is depressing. Poor guy, Hornstein, had been there six months uh, before that fire hit. So he was brand new. And the first six thing, weeks. Was six weeks or six months? It was a short period of time. And the first thing that burned big time was Kmart. And it burned really fast, really hot, and straight down to the ground. And it had a six inch high pressure water main coming in to feed their fire suppression systems there. And there were no fire suppression systems. And they had a geyser at Kmart. And it depressurized all of the rest of the systems around. And the firefighters couldn't turn it off. And then they had no water in the hydrants to fight the fires. Mm -hmm. And so they learned a lesson real quick there when the fire a day later was coming towards Kaiser. They were able to reroute all of the water and turn off all of the, you know, where they're having that problem with Fountain Grove and, um, uh, and the other places. Um, so that they had enough water to fight the fires at Kaiser and they saved Kaiser. So it was all good lessons learned and uh, that's it. And then the second speaker, uh, well, actually, it was Steve, his partner, <laughs> and Judy. And this is the new um, <coughs> water resilience portfolio from the government. Very interesting. Um, I'm just going to pass it down, but okay, he's in favor of one tunnel. Just to put that out there. And there's going to be a, a large resilience bond. <coughs> You don't quite know exactly how much it's going to be. Yeah. Did you get one of these? So everybody's got them. Oh, they're oh, yeah. direct. So if you look, we mostly talked about on page six, seven <coughs> uh, principles here. She highlighted those. Um, and also talked about, you know, more to come will be non potable water and desal consideration. And then water, wastewater to drink water. Which I don't know if we're in Canada go for that. Maybe. Oh, and also there, um, our, our, our conference is every two years. It's April 3rd. It's in Petaluma. Um, hope you all come. Hope you all come. And if the price goes up, I believe, after March 1st. Well, we should bring it up at the next meeting as an agenda to send. We'll get three tickets here, and if more than three people other than Pam and I would like to go. Um, put it on the agenda to do that. Let's move 13. Yep. Okay. Pursuant to where we talked about the agenda, let's move 13 up before number 8. Well, now before number 9. And. Uh, <coughs> So we're going to have a discussion and direction on the recently adopted District Ordinance Number 91 and capacity charges for accessory dwelling units, ADU. Mr. Mm -hmm. Summary. Yes, um, so last month uh, we had a visitor and a good discussion about how we implement capacity charges for accessory dwelling units. And the board requested to have a board item, but then I have this month to discuss it more and invite public input. Um, we did have a chance to go back and review ordinance number 91 and working with our line staff and what we identified was some flexibility 
in, in the existing ordinance that we wanted to point out to the board, but encourage your discussion and direction on, on what we should do next step. Uh, in essence, uh, the table that's in Ordinance 91, as it pertains to accessory dwelling units, specifies a fee <coughs> at $260 per fixture unit. Um, if you multiply that amount out by the number 23, which is the average number of fixture units in any residence in the Ross Valley Sanitary District, you get the capacity charge recommended in that study from October, which is $5,987. Now, a typical accessory dwelling unit does not contain 23 fixtures, which you know, there's, a mul there's a multiplier and everything, you know, there's dishwashers and, and, on, and laundry and shower drains and toilets and sinks you know, and outdoor kitchen, all the fixtures there. So those add up and typically the average in our district is 23. An accessory dwelling unit, whether it's attached or detached, um, whatever the type is, typically has between eight and 12 fixture units, which is about half of our average. So if you just go on a fixture basis, which the current ordinance allows, if you read you know, the letter, the plain language of the current ordinance, then you could charge accessory dwelling units approximately half. Uh, remember also that our uh, charge for capacity is a little less than half of the overall charge for capacity mm -hmm. because the treatment plant has their own system. CMSA has their ordinance, which is a little bit higher than the collection system side. So, and they actually have a $390 and change per fixture unit. So, uh, we put together a, a quick summary table on if you implemented this on a fixture basis instead of a flat fee of 5987, what the uh, RVSD and CMSA capacity charges would be, and that adds up to the total. And uh, compared to $12,239.73, which is the current flat fee for both, $12,200. That doesn't include permit fees. Um, it's a, it's, it ranges between 42, 43 and 65% of what a, a total capacity charge would be. So we think you already have an opportunity to set a price point for our rate payers lower than a, a typical connection. And um, that's consistent with your direction on sewer service charges in April of last year, where this board was the first in the county to set sewer service charges at half the rate of the rest of the EDUs. Um, for ADU. So you have shown a policy decision in the past that you're trying to support affordable housing uh, through the implementation of our fee structure through sewer service charges. Here's an opportunity for you to do that in terms of the capacity charges. And I think it's that. Uh, you know, we've, we've, there's concern about that being uh, that the state has set uh, up a framework where certain kinds of accessory drilling units are exempt from local fees, and certain new construction still are subject to those fees, but um, I think we're being encouraged to explore opportunities to make those fees more affordable. Can you maybe talk a little quickly about the four different cases, the two that are not exempt, from, uh, are exempt completely, and the other two, which I think are what all these... Well, the, the government has defined four <laughs> scenarios. Yeah. ADU types. Right. That's right, and, um, and you know, they, they are described and defined in the, in the ordinance. You, you did <coughs> the definitions previous to October 2019. They've been carried forward <coughs> because when we did a legal review of the new state law, we saw the definitions were more or less the same. And so type one and type three, uh, are, so type one accessory dwelling unit is within the current envelope of the existing structure. I have. So type one is exempt from local fees. It's, it's within the existing structure. Type one is within the existing materials code, so no new footprint. Yeah, right. right, and no fee. One and three, you just said. And three is an existing detached structure, like a garage that might exist. And it's already there. Right. And it's already on the property and it's you know, noticeable for years. And so it and both, is both given a pass. Both of those have no charge. Right. Then there's two, which is inside the original building but expanded. 
either add a room or you add two rooms. And four is you plunk something in the backyard. A new detached truck. Those are the four. And you know, and why capacity charges? I think it's worth noting that it's really capacity charges are for fairness. Yeah. Uh, to those who have already contributed to the system financially uh, for treatment and collection. Uh, so the, the principle behind capacity charges is universal in the United States of America. Right? Any sewer system is that you need to buy into the capacity that others have already financed. And so you need to have a, uh, a transparent way of calculating that. That was our purpose in October and the study <coughs> that uh, Hildebrand Consulting conducted was to connect that capacity charge to the value of our assets and create a fair uh, number for folks to buy in and, be, and take advantage of that system that the community has financed. So that, that's the principle behind the capacity charge. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's it. If I could add something. Um, okay, let's board, let's go for it. Uh, but I would just say that whatever we do today, um, if, if we decide to, to go with the uh, suggestion of staff, um, it's certainly possible for the two board members on this board who sit on CMSA to bring that issue over to CMSA well, and review that there. It, it automatically I, I, does. Yes, yeah, yeah. no, Steve, Jason knows all about this and has agreed to it. Yes, uh, I met, <coughs> met with uh, the GM of uh, CMSA and confirmed that they would support this approach. So, uh, so lower theirs? What is that? What is yeah, that? If we charge a half a unit, they will charge a half. Oh, I see. Yeah, I thought they mentioned some mass, right? So, right. Okay. How are, are we going to go count fixtures? Yes, well, we do anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, we would, our proposal would be just to go forward uh, implementing them for fixture day. And then CMSA would take our count of fixtures yes. to calculate theirs. Yes. Sure. Right. So previously we were charging type 2 and type 4 the full oh, connection. Yeah, and this is, and our ordinance kind of talks about fixture units anyway. <coughs> so we use interpreted that we could just use the fixture unit approach. Okay. And basically that results in something like uh, probably around 50 percent or so. So depends on big or more. Yeah. If there's twelve then it's, <coughs> it's eight it's, it's a better yeah if it's eight it's forty three percent. If it's twelve it's sixty five percent of the normal. Okay. Got it. Why, why, why did we jump to the average of the whole district previously? Well, I know why we talked that. We, we talked about if, if somebody's going to, in some cases, not all, and we didn't hear from the audience here, in some cases, if somebody's going to put another house on their lot and charge rent, they're going to make a lot of money. And you no, know, it's why should they get discounts? You now, other people who want to age in place, maybe we should. Take a look, you know. But when Ordinance 91 was was adopted, we set out this different way of doing it. So then I was just wondering why sort of administratively we do that. Well, yeah, it's, <coughs> it doesn't really relate. I mean, I appreciate Dr. Kelly, but the, the, the basis of 23 came about during a previous uh, rate study okay. in, uh, in the 2012, yeah. 2013 time, <laughs> you know, before our and And so that <coughs> analysis had been done at that time. And, and so we've carried that forward into this year's, into this latest rate set. Before, before the whole concept of ADU was in existence in California law. So anybody else here? Any other questions? Uh, let's, let's go out to the public now. And There's three of them. Three people. people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Can you introduce yourselves when you speak to Yeah, so I'm Marjorie Sun. I was here last time to present my plea to review the ordinance. Uh, I live in San Anselmo, and um, I've been a resident there for many years, a community leader. I'm trying to age in place. <laughs> um, and, um, and the, what's that? Art we all. <laughs> Yeah, Marin makes it really tough. Yeah. And um, uh, so I'm building an ADU in my, in my backyard, um, hoping that, you know, one, as a retiree, it will generate some 
rental income. It's only 416 square feet. Um, you probably have to go in sideways to the closet. And um, uh, it's, it's very tiny. And I, you know, so I'm hoping it generates a little bit of income. It's, it's not a Ross estate. I'm on 7,000 square feet on my little postage stamp lot. And my cottage, which is the main house on the lot, is 900 square feet. Um, so it's, it's really tiny. And what I'm trying to do is, you know, is to generate some income with this small ADU. And then, if the time comes, I can age in place and the caretaker can stay there. So I don't have to play go to town highest. So, um, some of these other places are working. How many plugging fixture units do you have? Because <laughs> I can calculate it for you. Would you have a kitchen? Yes. And so you have a sink and a, does a, sink. a dishwasher? And a dishwasher. Um, how about and then a bathroom with a shower, uh -huh. toilet, and a WC, and a clothes washer? And a clothes washer. <coughs> so, well, I think it's three. So Tom, there's a division between staff and board. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're probably would be in the range of 13 or 14 plumbing fixture units, which would be 31. 32. 32, it's 12. Yeah. yeah. No, it would be the total, because she's got, it'd be like 7,900 instead of 12,000. That's the... I'm sorry, these capacity charges uh, for CMSA would be the new ones or the old ones? This is all, this is new. This is, uh, this is all around. This is, this, okay. is, this is what the calculation would be. Okay. For they're not changing their dollar for FTU, they're just going to take our account of FTUs. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, there's no change in the dollar. Right? So, um, so as a point of reference, so I did some research since um, you all last met, and I called um, uh, the Sonoma uh, district, for Santa, I believe it was for Santa Rosa. And for ADUs that are under 700 square feet, there is no capacity charge. I called Alameda to Union District, I believe it is, and they charge um, 1300 for, I gave her the size of my ADU and that it was detached. And she says for that we would charge about $1,300. So it, it's a, even with the review and the, um, it sounds like a proposal under the current ordinance to go this range of 45 or something to 65% of the usual pension fees. Those are still very high compared to some of the neighboring districts in the Bay Area. So it, I just present that as a point of reference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to try and hear a speech, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to move on as well. Um, I have a very similar situation. Name My name is Jordan Wild, born and raised here in San Anselmo since 81. And uh, my wife and I bought a small thousand square foot home in San Anselmo back in 2009. Ten years later, we haven't done anything to that house because we couldn't afford it. And now we're finding ourselves working more from home, um, spend more time obviously with our children, and we need more space. And Looking at the costs around remodeling our house is astronomical and completely unaffordable for us. So what we decided this summer was we were going to look at building an ADU to create an office space for ourselves. Not a place that we were going to rent, but an office. An office with a bathroom. And unfortunately, an office with a bathroom is called an ADU. Uh, if I could build it into a garage, I would. But unfortunately, an ADU is a, a dwelling with a bathroom. Um, so in my situation, I'm kind of halfway through this project. I have a foundation, and I'm moving forward. I just got my sewer lateral inspected and approved. Um, I had to pay $13,000 to even put a shovel in the dirt. Um, and I would love to get that back. Um, you know, unfortunately, a 1,000 square foot house like yours, 900 square feet, there's no room to build an ADU. There's, you know, the garage, the single, single, you know, uh, space for <clears throat> the garage, and that's not really a, available to convert. Um, 
my lot is in a situation where there's not really space to build onto it unless I completely redo the house. So a detached Type 4 ADU was my only option. Uh, at the time, maybe I should have done my research a little bit better, but I didn't. I jumped, you know, jumped right in. And um, now I'm in a situation where I have to decide, do I hold off and put that bathroom in? Do I, you know, um, do I figure out how to make ends meet to pay the $12,000 for the sanitary district or the $34,000 that the water district is charging? So this is just one of one board of directors that I'm going to to speak on behalf of all ADU. You know, so that's my case. Um, so how, many, how many fixtures would you So what are you putting in a bathroom? So I'm putting in a bathroom, so it's a shower, a sink, and, and a toilet, and an outdoor space. So that's three fixtures. No, no, that's, that's four fixtures. Plumbing fixtures. Six plumbing fixtures and an outdoor sink. Shower is considered two and a half. Okay. So I believe mine is five and a half. At yeah, I have six. Okay. Five and a half. Yeah. So, <coughs> so your fee would be. <coughs> well, it's outside of that range. It's under. 3250 Yeah, okay. There you go. But even that is seems too high for the square footage. I'm also doing 416 square feet. And if I think to myself, if I put an extra bathroom in my own home, would I have to pay $3,000 or $4,000 for that bathroom in my, bath in my own home? No, I wouldn't. And so that's how I'm comparing the situation. But the, way, the way we look at that is, in, in, in her case, Marjorie's case, there's another person using it. In your case, there isn't. Yeah. That's not quite a lot. But they could. Right. And on the other hand, <clears throat> you know, I'm one person in my house, and I'm adding one other tenant. Yeah. So it's like, do you charge for the number of people who are using it, or yeah. no, no, <laughs> put your quarter in? <laughs> no, it's, it's capacity as a system. So you're you're creating a new conduit for a new family in the future that could potentially live there. You know, it's just yeah, and, 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 a, and a potential demand on the treatment system. It's so it's, it's about access. You know, you've quoted some other connection fees, but if an agency, does, and believe me, the agencies do it all in different ways, if an agency does it correctly, think about it, we're a small district here, we have probably $300 million, $300 million worth of sewers, and we have <coughs> the replacement cost of the plant that did it was something like $350 million. So, that capacity charge buys into $0.6 billion worth of facilities because it's so darn expensive. <clears throat> so somebody charging $1,200 for a connection has a perfect charge. They, they probably haven't looked at it. This district didn't look at its culture fee for, for years mm -hmm. and years. Yeah. You know, like 15 years. You know, we'd, we'd be back there at those other rates. Um, do you think that Union Sam is looking at it right? I thought they had a pretty good reputation for it. Yeah, and where the, and then we just Is she quoting uh, Union yeah. as? No, you quoted it Sonoma. Sonoma. Yeah, He's I, I, and I called Alameda. Union, to, I believe that's the name, Union District, mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and Santa Rosa. San Jose charges nothing for an ADU that's under 700x square feet, like 725. <coughs> and um, and Union District was about 1,300 for for my sized detached ADU. Um, and I would like to bring up one more point. So when I moved into this house about a year and a half ago, um, one of the first things I had to do um, was put in a new sewer level replacement. That was like 14 grand all in. It. So now on top of this, <laughs> on top of that, for the AU, um, it's potentially anywhere from whatever this new calculation would be to the to what the new old calculation would be. <clears throat> so that, that's a lot of money. I the rent I might be able to charge at most is for the 400 square feet. Um, is maybe two grand at the very how much two grand, two grand. at the very most. 
I, I want to just respond to that one quick part. I understand that, but as far as the, the lateral, that is the property owner, and we don't get any of that, so it's not, while I understand it, none of that comes to us. Did you get a grant, by the way? I hope you got a $1,500 grant. Right, but, um, but even with the grant, that's still a lot. maybe it's still a lot. <laughs> one, of, one of the difficulties that we have in the entire system, is, and I'm very briefly about laterals, is we have a tr on, on a dry day, the flow into the CMSA is about 11 million gallons a day. And on a wet day, like during our big storms, mm -hmm. we're seeing over 130 million gallons a day. And that's not because people are washing their clothes more on rainy days. And it's because the laterals, which in this area, because it's a very <coughs> old area, are very, very, very bad. And so we know that a lot of that is coming from our pipes, but a lot of it is coming from the 200 miles worth of laterals that we have in this district. And so we had to find a way um, on the sale or remodel of the home that those laterals would get fixed because we can't do it. And the, well, and the so state state you're saying that I did it, but it's too bad. I know. <laughs> There's the ABU fee. Um, when I had the sewer lateral replaced, I had a wide connection to put in so that I might be able to just tap in my ADU at minimal cost. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, it's turning out to be a lot of cost, you know, in terms of just time, uh, months to recoup that cost. You know, uh, oh, yeah. just one, one uh, comment I wanted to make. You know, again, I think we're all trying to do this above board. We're trying to do this legally. We don't want to, you know, cut corners or, or do it without a permit. But. I even had, I'm not going to name names, but I had somebody in the planning department, and I won't name the city, even recommend that I just put in a garage and then convert it next year to an ADU so I can skip all these fees. Now, I don't want to do that. That just seems slimy, and I don't think that's the right, right approach. So I just want to you know, remind you that there are other folks encouraging folks to get around this. See, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh, you're doing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> what time do you live in? <laughs> we're three musketeers. We're all you know, exactly like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to go that route, and I don't want to delay my project in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. But I'd love for you guys to you know, take that into consideration. Can I ask you something? Yes. So, I was a planning commissioner in Fairfax for nine years, and you're absolutely right. People who cannot afford these extra fees. They go around in some way or another. It probably will catch up to you if you sell it or if something goes awry. But I've seen this when I was there repeatedly. You know, they just walk away and then they go do their thing. So, is there a possibility we could do a a review or a search just to see if we could look at our fees? Um, a little differently than this. We can do whatever we want. I'm, I'm yeah. hearing. We can do whatever we want, man. <laughs> well, I'm just putting it out there for the whole board. Yeah. I'm not just saying me. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm with it. But I, but I feel badly before a lot of people because here, you know, you, there's, there's so, so many problems with no place to live. And here, you have neighbors who really try to do the right thing and blah, blah, blah. And somebody wants to retire, and I'm going to be in the same boat. So, and, and it's hard, it's really hard. It doesn't feel like the you know, community is trying to help. Do it. Yeah. So I would ask that we do a search, see if we're in the ballpark, and then go from there maybe. I don't know. I don't want to put a lot of work on staff, but I, I'm really shocked to hear that there's no fee. But if that's true, yeah. there might be a whole other bunch staff you yeah. have a special situation, sir. Well, it's you know it's very similar to both of theirs. Actually, I'm really surprised. And, and just to your point, you know, my first thing was going to take a water meter, and I had a water meter installed. It was supposed to be done on Monday for twelve thousand dollars, and I heard about them having a meeting just like this on Tuesday. So I called them. They said, "Wait, you come to the meeting." I went to the meeting. They rescinded that twelve thousand dollar fee. And I can connect the water my water from my missing house to the ADU without buying a separate meter. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, you have to go to meetings every month to figure this stuff out. I was talking to Larry. I was talking to Larry. Anyway, that's the water district. Where is the man? My name is Warren McKean. I am also in San Anselmo. And I am. I am building an ADU under my carport. Uh, I'm not changing the size of the carport or anything like that. I'm building a carport, and then the, uh, my architect said, hey, we got a whole bunch of, I'm on a steep hill. Uh, we have a whole bunch of airspace underneath this carport. Why don't we stick an ADU in there? And I have a granddaughter who's going to, going to college, and I can stick her in that, in that thing and uh, have an affordable space for her and get her life, she's 19, get her life started in a small ADU. Um, as a, a side story I told Steve when I met with him, uh, when I was just out of school, um, my girlfriend worked for Saks Fifth Avenue, or High Magnum Saks Fifth Avenue, and every person that came in there from Marin County, she asked, hey, do you know a place I can, I can rent? <laughs> and yes, the funniest lady from Ross came in, she had a two-car garage with a little ADU thing above it. And we moved into there and lived there for two years. <laughs> Um, after that, we met another neighbor who had a four-car garage, <laughs> and we moved into that. Steve, if you put in, isn't that under the existing footprint? Yeah. And so wouldn't that be under one of these ones that's not applicable? Oh well, yeah. his story of the the one of his experience in Ross, yes. But you mean his proposal? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, it's I, a I, new carport, so it's I, a new structure. I can clarify this. Yes, I'm building the carport brand new. Yeah, but the carport yeah. has no plumbing fixtures. Has no plumbing. So what you're but saying it's is that it's a new structure. It's a new structure. But That's once that structure is built, carport. once that carport is built, can I, it, then it becomes existing, does it not? No. <laughs> oh, That's not a good one. It depends on if the state law makes you switch. I was told that. Just a minute. Stick around. Let's see where we go on this. Why don't we? How big is yours? 80, I don't think it's what else. 484. So they're all small. They're all small. 22 square feet. 22 feet square. Um, one thing I want to do for clarification on some of this, I'm not sure all of us, I think, have done a lot of research to learn about this stuff. The first thing I learned about was AB881, and the state's been trying to pass a law like AB881 for years and years and years. It's failed until last October. It passed on October. I want to read you one sentence out of there, which I think clarifies all of this stuff and makes something a little different with this um, agency. It said, accessory dwelling units shall not be considered by local agency, special district, or water corporation to be, to be a new residential use for purposes of calculating connection fees or capacity charges for utilities including water and sewer service, unless the accessory dwelling unit was constructed with new single family dwelling. Um, my point of reading that is, it says ADU. It does not say type one, type two, type three, type four. And the staff report for item 13 on this report says, According to state law and our local regulation, type 2 and type 4 get charged. State law does not have type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. State law says ADU. That's what I, it says. I, I thought you said they, they've been trying to pass that for years and they didn't. They did in October. They did pass in October last year. Okay. Yeah. Well, the state law does define ADU, so we've... So it defines an ADU, it does not find types. And that okay. doesn't type okay. 1, type 2, type okay. 3, type 4, it's not in the state law. You're so. right, and... This, this, thing, it, this staff report says it is. I'm sorry, it, it, maybe it's not as clear as it should be, but the ordinance, the ordinance's definitions of type 1, and 2, 3, and 4, and the exclusion of fees for 1 and 3, is exactly what the state law requires. Subdivision E. But stick around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's fine. So, okay. so there's a question whether I'm a type four or type three. That's something okay. that I, I talk to people about. And that, that, that is up for, for a possible thing. The other thing, though, is Ordinance 91. And Ordinance 91 is, in fact, your regulation. Right. Right. Your regulation says it's supposed to be based on an FTU basis, not this $12,000 thing. It says specifically in there it's to be based on the FTUs. That's what Ordinance 91 says. You just weren't implementing a, a, Ordinance 91. Yeah, that's what so this whole thing is, is moot. I just got it. I just got my permit for my ADU. I got a twelve thousand dollar permit fee to do it. But your own ordinance says that should not be twelve thousand dollars. Should be closer to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah. But without me doing all the research, I'd be paying the twelve thousand dollars. I wonder how many other people are in the same situation I am in Four. since the passage of ordinance. And you knew that you didn't call me, did you? Steve? You knew that I was under this regulation. You knew that I came in and talked to you specifically about this. 
So and you so didn't call me back and say, oh, we made a mistake. Hey, I can save you $6,000. Okay. Anyway, that's just yeah, yeah, yeah. We just did it. We're we're here. Just <laughs> the general manager has, this is why we're having this yeah, discussion. Yeah. He, he can't he, he can't unilaterally, um, yeah, he can't make a decision. It has to come to the board. Well, Ordinance 91, though, says that this is what, you guys made that decision when you passed yeah. Ordinance 91. We're regressing it. We're regressing it. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. We'll, we'll come back. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. Thank you. We don't do the two minute thing. We're, we're always losing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was a, a real advocate for um, enforcing our connection with the ordinances. So I really believe in them because of the other. <coughs> and, but yeah. I. Oh, okay. But um, <clears throat> I think we can make. I think we. Got, some, got a chance here to do something correct. For example, we've got a couple of options. I'm not in favor of surveying what other people do. Yeah. I think we can figure it out ourselves. Um, I think that, uh, for example, we could add up the total EDUs on their houses. And if it's below 23, FTUs. You know, like if you're, yeah. FTUs. Yeah, yeah FTUs. You know, like, Probably with small homes, you don't have 23. You might have fewer. Mine's nine. For your existing home? No, your home. existing home plus the, uh, the other one. So if somebody, if somebody has a small home and only has like 15 uh, plumbing fixtures, uh, we should, we, we could, I mean, this is a the board, we could give them a credit up to 23. I won't pay anything for 23. How many bathrooms are in the existing homes? One bathroom. Okay. So you okay. probably have 14 to 18, 15, something like that. Another thing we could do is, you know, I, I think we ought to be leaders on this. That's what we're getting into. I don't think we need to. I agree. And I think we, I'm sorry, you don't say that again. I think we ought to be leaders in you know, making ADUs help them to work. You know, I don't see us getting rich off of overcharging. So I I like this plumbing fixture unit I, idea. I like maybe giving credit if they don't have these are options. Another thing we could do is just say if it's a ADU it gets a fifty percent discount. Mm -hmm. and, and we do that twenty three. I, I, I kinda like the disc the, the talk that if it's really small, I mean again, you know, if you have a, a, a uh, an ADU that's 900 square feet, that's the size of our house. You're going to make some decent cash off of that. And there's no real reason why we need to suck it all up. But these tiny little places, yeah, what much, where, 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 well, the law, the law talks a lot about 750 square feet. There's many mentions in the law. But why, why couldn't we say every ADU under 750 square feet is not subjected to a new connection fee or a CSMA oh. char capacity charge? That's I think we're how we area. saw. That's how we saw this law because, again, type one and three are void of any fees except for a permit fee. Period. Not FTU. No, not nothing. Just a permit fee. We're suggesting that we should be bundled under that same rule. I, I, I agree with you. I think your suggestions are great. If our houses are smaller than twenty three FTU, we should get a credit. I think that's brilliant. But I also think that. Really, we should only have to pay a permit fee here because we're already we've already paid into the capacity. I agree. We're not, we're not, I thought that was a brilliant comment that Mr. Gaffney mentioned about since we are our, my total is going to be 22, I think, when I'm done. Your house and house and the ADU. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, my house is 14 and my ADU is nine, so that's 23. Mm -hmm. um, Me too. So I, I, th I think that sounded to me like a great compromise. If I had a mansion and I had 45, if I had all the, you know, 45 ADU or FTUs in my house, I'm really only paying for 23, right? Because that's all that a big mansion just pays the same thing a small house does. Yep. Um, we, we, what a great idea. We, we, just we actually add, we do add fixtures. Change units. that, yeah. If they're above 23, then you pay one. Okay. For those who get permits. <laughs> I'm not an expert in how you calculate the FTUs. But I would just say that in my little tiny ADU of 416 square feet, 16 by 26, um, it's for a, one person to live independently. It has a kitchen, laundry, so they don't have to go down to Red Hill 
No, to to somewhere in San Anselmo near Pilates <laughs> to go do her, his or her laundry, right? It's it's on site. So it's supposed to be a self-contained apartment. So I mean if I if I understand what yours is, it, it may not have a Full well, kitchen. Well, it does. Oh, oh, yeah. And a washer dryer. Actually, it's a single unit that's washing and drying both, yeah. both at the okay. same time. Anyway, so um, I don't know how the calculation of FTUs goes, but I'm not sure I'll get under your right. suggested. Well, but if we were charging oh. IFT, just, yeah. just for the sake of argument, right. and let's say you had 24 total, including both, if I'm saying this wrong correctly, that would mean. You'd be down to then you would then if the board decides if, if we were to do something like that, yeah. you would be down to really one FTU, which would be five hundred dollars. Oh. Now, okay. you know, because what do we do when we have? You know, do we have any rich people in Bryn? We build giant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's say you have somebody who has a forty. Uh, well, not in this row. <laughs> so they have a. They have, they have, he does though. <laughs> but let's say they have a five thousand square foot house. And they build a 7,500, you know, a 7, a 75, 750 foot square foot place. 7,000 foot. Should we give it a million dollars? You can just count. Then, you know, if we look at the total, mm -hmm. yeah. then you say, okay, you know, right. then maybe they should, in order, they're going to pay more in order to help. We have, to come up with something, we have to come up with something that fits everybody. Because if we say, okay, less than 750, then somebody will be here going, mine's 850. <laughs> oh, can I fit in there? Well, and I'd, also we say, I'd also say, like the lateral ordinance, we can tweak this thing forever. We can tweak it yeah. forever. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But I do, like the idea, yeah, I do like the idea a lot of if you have a, a, a small house to begin with and you're going to build a small ADU, You've got 23 plumbing fixture units, and, and can, you, you, you for the sake of it. argument, can we find out what yours are? And if you can, he's good at the county. Okay. What do you have in your house? You have a, a, a shower, kitchen, 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 and it's it's five, it's five it counts as five. Yeah. See? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but, but anyway, I'm, I'm just thinking that. It depends. Oh, go ahead. No. It depends, it depends yeah. if there's a shower and tub, like separate versus. Oh, yeah. oh separate. Okay. Combo. Yeah. One depends on how many drains there are. I you know. It's pure drain. I, and I if, it's, if it's a shower, shower if it's a shower, 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 it's a Okay. Thank you. It's very helpful. Thank you. The shower drain is two point two. So we're going to need a new ordinance if we mm -hmm. want to take all of these things into consideration. So shall we ask staff to? No, I think we should do this right now. Mm -hmm. No, we have to have, we have a written ordinance. We have to have it written. We can give direction as to what the ordinance. So yeah, we can't create so. an ordinance and pass it tonight. Right. Okay. I, I Thank mean, you. it sounds to me just thinking. That like in your case, Tom, if we added one, you know, what would it be for one plumbing fixture? Um, I think it's like two hundred and seventy and maybe three hundred. So that's six hundred dollars. Six hundred. You know, in that way yeah. you're yeah. taking care of it's down from that massive right. number, right. and the person who's got a mega mansion who's mm -hmm. adding in that little thing will buy into the system because they really are adding in. Mm -hmm. You're taking care of it, I think. You're to, at least you're not thirteen thousand, right? And and then if people come to us and say, "Look, well, you said seven hundred, you're we're at eight fifteen, They're taken mm -hmm. care of also. So mm -hmm. we don't care about the square footage. It's really the plumbing fixture. It is. Which, I mean, you know, because you could you could be building an art studio where you know there's just a toilet and, and, a, and a sink, and that's it. But it's fifteen hundred square feet because you're you got you know good point wood like that or something. All right. So does staff understand what the consensus is? And uh, what do you and, think? What do you what think, do you think? <laughs> general manager Moore? Uh, I I think you're at a 
place where you can make some policy calls. You know, I think uh, based on my talking to people, there is a range of approaches. What you've adopted in Ordinance 91 is asset register based, you know, right. a, a, a very defensible asset valuation based approach. But ADUs is a policy decision that the board should make. And I mean, I think about how I had to argue to get the you do agree to the reduction for the Fairfax. Well, that's what I started out with. Too. <laughs> Low income housing. So I think so it's wonderful that you were the one that came up with Well, this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, and we take into account equity and, you know, See, the, the <laughs> science of the plumbing fixture, you know, cost basis is pretty good. It's, it's, it's solid and it's, it's defensible. It, yeah. yeah, it's defensible and it's based on our costs, you know, it's mm -hmm. not what somebody else is doing. But uh, I just, yeah, it's yeah. a change for me. I think we really should support this ADU situation. I do. And uh, maybe do the. Yeah, and I like that. I'd like, so like to say that I think it's a, thing. it's a great recommendation, so thank you for at least hearing us out. But at the same time, I think we're skipping over the fact that we're categorizing ADUs. And some ADUs get a pass, and some ADUs... Well, the state law categorizes the ADUs. I, under, I understand. But the state is also saying we need to increase density, right? We need to increase... We need to lower the cost of housing, and so by doing that, that's what we're doing. But there, and there also, we have to understand one other thing. This district, which is old, has old pipes, and we're under court order to make some changes. This year, we spent $50 million. That's got to come from somewhere. So I think this is fair, and I think on all three of your cases, because you have just one bathroom, is that right? Yes. I think on all three, this is, we're talking three or four hundred dollars. I think that's very workable. But we do want to say something. And, and I just wanted to, in that, when you do the ordinance, can we make it retroactive to a certain date? So I, I agree. So we can actually continue with our projects. Yes, uh, that that will be clear. Uh, yeah. You know, any overpaying will be dealt with. Yeah, yeah, I agree. No, no, that's no that's problem. absolutely that. Yeah. Um, so I would just add that I would applaud your... The what? Applaud your recommendation to... Well, they were your Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we just found a way to get them done. The, 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 the collective changes um, would make it um, much easier and a better incentive to build a means to solve the housing crisis. Well, and to help people like me, me <laughs> age in place, and um, to, to keep serving the communities that we love. Well, I've been here so long. And we want to support press. people actually being honest about what they're doing. I mean, that's a very salient point to me, that folks could just go underground and do other things that wouldn't come out until they... You know, I know several people, too, who are moving into the ADU and renting out their large yeah. house. Yeah. 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 That's a family size down. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, and the fiscal impact is not significant. As I mentioned, there's four ADU applications since we passed the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. And are these three of them? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're the other guy. Yeah, what's the other one? Well, well, it it call him up. <laughs> no, no. I said the other one didn't show up. They don't get any discounts. <laughs> 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 I, I met her yesterday. No, she didn't say her no, 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 no. Well, that's, yeah, so that's somebody else. No, that's not our expenditure. Oh. No, that's not That's okay. Um, you know, um, it helps a board yeah. when a public come in, yes. comes in, and, and, to, and it's reasonable. Yeah. You know, it, you could come in and scream at us, and you'd probably turn it off. But when you come in reasonable, and then we realize, hey, we've got to be reasonable. Yeah. That's about it. But I also will have to say, to this entire board, I like the way this board, which is different, allows this. Everybody else is two minutes, sit down, be quiet, you're done. I hate that. So this is much better. So because we can get input as we're going along. Sure. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll Let me ask you a question. Thank you, this point. Can we give staff direction? I think they um, understand. Yeah. Well, we, we should make sure we're clear. So yeah. if, were we going forward with the idea of the, the whole fixture count for the parcel? Yes. Yeah. And then giving a credit. And, and so if there's and, less And allowing fixture, up to 23. And so then the, the And then going by a fixture unit after that. Okay. Yeah. The principles of resolution 91 kick in for anything in excess of 23 for the parcel. And, and we're going to keep the On a fixture basis. And yeah, we're going to remain open yeah. to hearing if that's if there's still some equitable you know problem with that. 
Because um, I, th I think that is the difference. You all have small phones to start with. I think I don't think the that our ordinance, you know, is going to affect that. Our ordinance contemplated that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, we didn't contemplate that this would be, you know, it a sounds, small house with a small. Sounds so much letting you put the ADU on small lots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Are you over the floor area ratio of the county? Well, again, okay. ADU 81 says you cannot use floor ratio. Yeah. Right. If there's so a bunch of new laws, oh. people are pretty upset about it. They feel like. Good. It's going to be all these so the county can't enforce the floor area ratio? Not on ADU. Not on ADU. Setbacks have oh. changed to four feet. Big, big changes have been made. It took, it took like six, eight years to get it passed. It kept failing, 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 failing. If we did this thing after all this communication, up to 23, free pass. Over 23, one or two, and it's a very per, easy per fixture base. Per fixture per basis. Fixture. Yes, per fixture, yeah. per fixture yeah. basis. And if somebody's got three, yeah. this is what I have a lot of trouble with. Yeah. But it's still, it's still, still one. One. I have 14 in the house. Does that make sense what we just said? Yeah. Yeah. No, not that's what we said. I, I just want to say one last thing that another house on my street, a three bedroom, two bath house, maybe a little bit bigger than maybe some of our homes, might have 23 fixtures, right? And if they want to put an ADU in the backyard, they're looking at $13,000. No, 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 they're looking at the per fixture Oh, it's all, it will be only after the 23, it will be only a per fixture yes. break. So that's not, sorry, no, that's totally not, that's yeah. totally reasonable. It's more proportional. I thought it was another we 23. Were, yeah, it was more proportional than we implemented previously. So yes. this is all very useful. Great. And so uh, we'll bring this back the next time. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm, yeah, uh, we can. So we won't change any definitions of type one, type right two. Right now, no. That's the same thing. The only thing that changes is the toilet. Two snaps. That's up. I can't hear. Steve. So we're summarizing our action for next month. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, the only modifications to Ordinance 91 then would be uh, related to uh, how fixtures are, or what the number of fixtures to charge for yeah. other determined. It will be based on a sum of the fixtures in the existing single family residence or whatever the residence yeah. is. Uh, up to uh, the sum of that amount and the proposed ADU minus 23 fixtures yeah. on a fixture. Yeah. Fixture. We can credit up to 23 so we'll for existing for So that makes sense. I think the board is we're good with that. So I, I, that I, that I, would I, be a change in uh, the, attack, the exhibit A attachment yep. under four accessory dwelling units. Yes. And I may make it clear that before there has been confusion about charging the full fee because it just says according to the district capacity charges. So if you put the word in listed below, in the below, in the table below, then it clarifies the confusion. That was uh, Mr. McKinney. Well, we're going to redo Exhibit A. Are we going to redo Exhibit A? If, if we did... We're just going to make a, 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 a surgical change. Okay. But you know what else we could do is ADU Type 1, uh, no new footprint. ADU Type 2, <laughs> two, two, two or three word explanation of what they are. Well, we have that. Oh, within the exhibit? Okay, because it's in the body of the order. It's on page 123. Yeah. Yeah, but just a two word right on that. Oh, okay, just to make the table easier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Could I make a suggestion on the table? Um, uh, so it was a little confusing to me because it, you're, that, that whole table is comparing it to, to a footnote um, of the top. The, mm -hmm. that sum, correct? I would put that sum at the top, like in a, in a headline, not in a footnote, because that's what that whole table, that matrix, is comparing to that, that A plus B will C at the bottom. I can't remember the figures. It, it adds up to like 12 or 13. Or oh, I see what you're talking about in our staff report? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Another suggestion <laughs> to clarify things for people like me too. Is it possible to put a clear definition what an FTU is? What counts as an FTU? Like, I wonder, is a host bib an FTU? If it is, I think I'll close off my host bib. Well, that's a plumbing fixture that doesn't go to the yeah. drain. I mean, that's what I thought. I, I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't mention host bibs. 
And well, I just because want... when I'm applying for the water district, it tells right. me oh, that a that. hose bib is one FTU. Yeah. Oh. We're a worried drain. it comes it down a drain. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit confused. There. But here's the definition of it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's in the Uniform Plumbing Code. It's confusing. But I've got, a thing, I've got a thing called the bathroom group, and it says, look at section 202 on the bathroom group it is. That includes this, this, and that. And you're searching around. So it's really difficult for a layperson to calculate this to you. Yeah, you know, I agree with that. I'd, I'd like to see us make that simple. Yeah. Okay. Can we throw it down? Is that to use in the next, is it attachment to the next? Try it. Okay. Well, we can, we can try. Staff. Or at least the way we're going to assess it, right? We're going to go out and inspect. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll so have a reference in there to the uniform plumbing code. It's hard to understand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's maybe, we'll, maybe we'll staff can create a worksheet for people who, so well, as they begin be, to yeah, design there, there, an ADU, this is what you should be thinking about. There is a reference it to it, it's just not in the right place. Okay. I think it will be a little more Yeah, or on the website. Okay. Yeah. Thank I, you, I and thank you, Mark, have, for bringing this to us in the first place. Like, it gives us an opportunity to operate the way we're supposed to with the public. <laughs> well, by the way, I thank her, too, because I've actually gone to my assemblyman to get this done. It's been three weeks, and I've gotten basically nothing back from them. I've, I've talked to seven people at, at, at Mark Levine's office, and yeah. they're not dealing with it. So I'm, yes. you, you made this happen. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Good. Well, you wrote it so that you welcome. contact us, too, so yeah. we're going to take that. Marjorie, Marjorie reached out to us. We're not going to take a break. That's okay. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you all. Thank you. Do you want to stay for the consent calendar? So, now there we go. Sorry, I'm just going to ask you, are you sticking that in nine? Um, no, uh, no, we haven't done item nine yet. Okay. I haven't turned the page. Okay, I apologize. I'm now turning the page. <laughs> um, why don't we do a verbal report by board members and staff for requests for future items? Okay, the, I was just going to suggest we go ahead and move uh, the consent calendar up and then do item nine after that. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, consent calendar. Matters listed under this item are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion. The consent calendar may include resolutions. Therefore, the motion, second, and vote will also be applicable for the resolutions and recorded accordingly. There will be no separate discussion of those items unless requested by a member of the board or the public prior to the time when the board votes the board votes on the motion to adopt. Would anybody like to pull anything from the consent calendar? Includes the minutes, right? Hmm? Does that include the minutes? Uh, yes. I have one quick question on the minutes. Go for it. So, um, <clears throat> on page five of six, um, item number 10, uh, I just wanted a clarification because I had heard when we talked about this there was a $400,000 potential cost to us and I just wanted to make sure if that's accurate. Mm -hmm. so, I, I was Wait, which item? Uh, the minutes on page 5 of 6 at the midway. <clears throat> I had um, there was a probable cost of tenant improvements, and I had heard four hundred thousand dollars. So I just wanted to know. Oh, 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 that was. Uh, so I'd like that placed in there, please. Um, actually, well, I, I think I, I want to discuss that a little bit more. I, you know, we could do that, but um, I'm not sure if I would characterize that as a probable cost. It, um, because that implies that's going to happen, yeah. and that's. This was a preliminary proposal from the tenant that um, you know, is under negotiation. I, 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 I'm not sure if it's putting that in the minutes is, is a meaningful number, right? Because it was, it was preliminary in nature, and I, I don't think it's it's an accurate uh, description. I'll watch the video. I'll watch the yeah. video. Yeah. We'll get back. <clears throat> That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Can you do your motion? 
I'll move the approval of the consent. Oh, uh, just for one more thing. Um, since uh, Mark Wilson is here from New Engineering on on item 10E, you know, this is what I was saying. You could pull it off for separate uh, discussion or not. But I wanted to introduce you to Mark, and uh, who's going to be leading the, uh, the design team on the pump station rebuilds. Um, and he's here to answer any questions. Or, but <laughs> I would just I would just say that. Um, you know, we're excited to do this project because it's the last of the major pump stations at here at Venice Street, Larksburg. And we also have an opportunity to deal with a property boundary uh, uh, issue with the local school district and do so in a way that doesn't uh, lead us down the path of having to pay rent uh, to them because you know, they did actually request rent for the, the property boundary issue. And so we can combine that. We have an opportunity by doing improvements at the pump station <coughs> to put that on the bid and change where the fence is located, literally, uh, and still be able to do our operations fully. And so he'll, he'll, we're going to use this vehicle to be able to do that as well. But we're dealing with the roof. We're dealing with putting in a new VFD. We're dealing with the uh, old generator at this pump station and also two other pump stations. So, uh, and working with the electrical engineer, Todd Beecher, who did a great job for us on the Kentfield Pump Station 15 project last fall, just a few months ago, to get that done in time for wet season. He was really pivotal in that team and getting that done. And, and Mark's worked with him a long time. And he's worked with Noel as well. So, uh, I know Mark, if you want to just make any high level of comments on, on the project and, you know, and, and our, our and Newt's experience in, in working. Uh, with the district pump station. Well, the, thanks, Steve. The, the, chief had, the last uh, uh, work at the major pump station, what we used to call the large school pump station, mm -hmm. uh, that was my project in the first years I started at New, and that was 2003. And, uh, and that gen set at that time, which uh, uh, was, was put in, was actually a, a, a used unit at the time. Uh, just to say money. And uh, so, yeah, it was just a few years after, I think, the city of Larchburg basically said, you know, here, Rock Valley, this is yours. And uh, so, yeah, I've had that experience, the early experience with the, what's installed there right now for most of the pump station. It was, it was a pretty uh, comprehensive upgrade at that time in 2003. Um, the only kind of, and then the only th other thing I'd add, you know, it's, it's also a couple other pump stations, the smaller ones, 24 and 25. You're not the only district that felt the effects of PGD's PSTS. It was a real eye opener during dry weather, of course. But four to five days, three and a half, four or five days, because where you were, a power outage, a real power outage, was a real eye opener for a lot of districts. <coughs> and I you know several other you know, the bottle sanitary districts are doing three changes that they discovered, you know, problems. Like at Larkspur, the generators just couldn't hold up to the to that abuse. I don't know if you want to even call it abuse. Mm -hmm. That use, you know, twenty four hours a day, you know, three and a half day long operations. So um, it it, uh, it definitely was an eye opener. I don't know what we'll see this year, but uh, yeah, did bring up the issue of 24 and 25 as well. You know, that, those are two older generators, and they're probably not, they wouldn't pass air permitting now. Right. Mm -hmm. They're loud, and they're near the, you know, the hospital over there in residential yeah. areas. And and so, you know, yeah. and then we had a, a standby generator yes. of 24. Yep. So we had a generator, we had a standby as well, because we didn't trust yeah. that infrastructure. Yeah. We, we discussed this uh, in the finance committee yesterday when we went over these. Yeah. Um, would there be any possibility, seeing as how we're about 50 feet from that pump station, and perhaps at the next board meeting, um, in 10, 10 or 15 minutes, and just walk over there? And yeah, well, when the day's getting longer. Yeah, the days are getting longer. Would <laughs> <laughs> you be a dark three or something? Anyway, just a thought, maybe we could. I'm fine, yeah. I'll bring it to our model. We'll get to go. Well, we can put it on the agenda, right? <laughs> yeah, large first. Can you, 
Wait, before we offer, before we occupy one line of the end, yeah, yeah. <laughs> while we're still over here. Yeah, yeah. Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Thank you for coming. Um, here. You got to sit through the whole so, ADU. Yeah, that was very good. <laughs> so really, do I hear a motion? I move. Yeah. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And nine. Yeah. Nine is verbal reports. Okay. First, we have any of the board members? Uh, CASA was nice. Yeah. Uh, any, any reports from the board members? Yeah. Well, no, I, again. We were not explore. You, you started talking about CASA. If you want to say you can talk about CASA, then we can. I don't know anything there were some. That. There were some very incredible uh, talks, and uh, Steve was honored to be the moderator of one of the talks. Uh, the one, the, one of the ones that stood out to me was this the leading edge stuff that some of these agencies okay. people are doing. Like um, there was a guy from Stanford who uh, they had discovered that those deep sea hydrogen vents. Uh, where there's no air, so it's all anaerobic. Um, they have fish and crabs and everything growing down there, and they try to figure out what are they eating, and they're eating a bacteria which doesn't feed on oxygen, it feeds on hydrogen. And that they, if one wanted to, they're doing the experiments now, um, that they can take the output of our biogas and, and grow bacteria and feed it to fish farms and cattle and and other kinds of things, and it would be all very clean uh, energy to do that. And then there was another fellow uh, who uh, was talking about the new fuel cell, fuel cell technology, Bloom Industries, I think he was. Um, and uh, three years ago or so over at uh, CMSA, when we were talking about what kind of co-generation co co equipment we wanted, we opted to get another mechanical engine because it was the only one that made sense at that time. Um, but what's clear is up and coming is fuel cell technology. Um, it'll be more efficient and uh, easier to operate, no moving parts <coughs> and other stuff. So it's very cool. Lots of good stuff. Wipes, big issue. <laughs> so, yeah. I do. I am requesting that we move the April meeting to the fourth week. Can we put that on the agenda for the next time <laughs> if the board can do it? I appreciate it. So yeah, right now it's scheduled uh, April fifteenth. Why? Can't make the meeting. I can't make the meeting. You can't call. Oh, I'll be out there tomorrow. No, it's the. So yeah, I'm at a conference, so that would be nice for me too. We can move it to the okay. okay. Well, if, if the point you were going to be missing, maybe we should just reschedule the as well. Well, that's what we're doing. That's what we're oh, the whole, I thought, okay. <laughs> I figured we were moving something off the agenda. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Right. So, so, so the proposal is to move the instead of the third Wednesday, which is the earliest one, is the 15th, to the 22nd, to, to make it the 22nd. Yeah. There are five Wednesdays that month, so it's yeah. not the craziest thing. Right, so that's been the problem. There also has been, while you're talking about that, um, my schedule in July, um, I had something come up where I can't make the, the week of the board meeting, the 15th. So I was going to ask the board if it would be okay to move it up one week, July 8th. To July 8th? Okay, let's put it on the agenda. And the previous meeting would be um, June 17th, so it still allows some time between the board meetings. And the first meeting of the fiscal year usually, it's a good idea to hold it because of the elections and, and that sort of thing. So I was and going to ask you if that would make sense for your schedule. Yeah, so you want it on the 8th? Yeah, yeah. if okay. that's possible. Okay. Yeah, it's July 8th. Yeah. Yeah. Done the, as a backup, 22nd, but maybe the 8th would be less apt to be a conflict with other summer plans. Okay. Okay. So we could combine them on the, on the agenda item next month, right? Yeah, it was a step that I was talking about. You know that. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Steve Nix's show me a brochure for our scholarship. So I think it needs to be put on the board, I guess, to authorize what it's going to look like and how we're going to do it and um, how many scholarships. I'm so stoked about this. About eight years since I've been talking about it. So could we do that? Because I think we're finalized pretty much, right? Yes. We're ready to roll. And Steve Nix is awesome. Thank you. So yeah, together. <laughs> so request for board item um, to, to authorize the scholarship program. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just tell us about it. <laughs> that, I'd love to hear that too. Mm -hmm. I wish Steve would work a little harder. Right? <laughs> 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 Two much spare time. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? So it was after the last one name. Mm -hmm. The California Water Environment Association Redwood Empire Section uh, Small Collection System of the Year Award for Ross Valley Sanitary District. So Stephen Mix has uh, attended that award ceremony. And now we're that qualifies us to compete for Small Collection System of the Year for the state of California. Mm -hmm. And we're in the running, and that will be uh, announced in April. Yes. The winner of that annual competition. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, um, we continue to discuss recycled water and using CMSA water from the current fill station and, and streamlining the permitting system. And so I met with uh, Ben Orenstein and Jason Dow this week, and we we're finalizing a strategy to get uh, basically make CMSA the administrator of the program, not for any municipal water district. And that will just make things more streamlined as far as getting approval, not just for our use, but, but the public's use of that great resource. So, <coughs> So we're moving forward with that and getting it redefined, the roles redefined. That's great. Uh, so they're all excited. The key there was CMSA staff. Did they want to do it? And they do. You know, so we just want to make sure that they were on board running the permit system as a producer of recycled water. So we're taking the next step. That's all I have. Okay. I'm sorry, when we took a tour of the uh, uh, pump stations, um, and I asked you about the new truck. I think you said it was coming the next day or the week. <laughs> the week, yeah. Uh, I think it's coming. It's in the morning, actually. It's, it's coming tomorrow morning? Yeah, tomorrow morning. Sometimes. And I say I give morning it loosely. <laughs> it's <laughs> when, when the driver arrives before noon sometime. I'm going to come over sometime this week. Yeah, come on over. We'll check it out. What kind of truck is it? It's the one we spent a half a million dollars on. Well, that's what I was wondering. Can you drive fast? It's the yeah. one where we're going to put in the San Samuel Country Fair Day Parade. Uh, okay. <laughs> is, that the right. one? Right. is that the one with the tripod <laughs> capacitor? Yes, <laughs> that is the one. <laughs> 88, 88 miles an hour, that's it. <laughs> Number 11. How are we going? Uh, oh, are we at 11? Yeah, okay, go. No. I'm sorry. We're skipping number 11 and on to number 12. Consideration of authorizing the general manager upon review and approval of council to execute a construction contract for the fiscal year 2019-20 force main of Porridge's project with Trinet Construction Inc. in the amount not to exceed $1,179,500. Okay, so we went out to bid for one of the uh, capital projects that has been identified along, and over the years as part of our uh, suite of uh, projects to address our enforcement order from the regional board and also just dealing with maintenance driven concerns mm -hmm. in terms of reliability and risk of, of SSO. This now, now we turn to the third part of our system. You know, we talked about pump stations today and there's the gravity sewers part of our system. But there's also this other system, force mains, pressurized pipes that come out of the pump station that go to the treatment plant. This project is focused on basically valves. Um, one, one set of valves that lets gas out of the pressurized force main escape to the atmosphere and not cause problems within the pipe system, pressure problems. And the other type of valve is an isolation valve which cuts off one portion of the connected system so you can maintain it. You can dry it out and work on it. And we have a problem with not having good uh, reliable valves to isolate sections of force main to be able to uh, work on it. That then in an emergency takes away one of the tools in our toolbox. Also these, um, these that's what force main appurtenance is. Appurtenances are these valves that are located within the pressurized pipe system. We thought we were going to do four. Over the summer, uh, staff has given us feedback and we've identified eight. And you remember in October, we okayed an extension of design and design contract to cover four additional appurtenances. So now, we've, uh, they've done a great job for us, Shop and Wheeler, managed the bid process, got the plan and specs together, got good input from staff, and finalized that. We got, as, as shown in the um, staff report, we had uh, four bids that were responsive and responsible. Well, at least you know, the low bid, we determined that. 
and we have the engineer's estimate shown there. So we were close with our low bid to the engineer's estimate, and that's well within the budget number that we've been using for our capital program of about 1.4 million. And the engineer's estimate was less than that, and, and the bid came in there. So we have a good story to tell as far as the budget. Uh, and that happened just on January 31st. We, uh, and there's a five day, or there's a seven day protest period by business day. And that ended last Friday, and there were no bid protests. So, uh, as far as the contractor trinet, they they have bid on a number of Marin County projects. Haven't really been low bidder. They're from San Francisco, but they have a lot of experience in the town of Hillsboro. You know where that is, yep. right? In the peninsula. So, actually, a setting not unlike ours. You know, in terms of hilly, uh, larger parcels, and. Uh, similar old sewer system demand. Their, uh, their experience that they indicated was a little bit more on the water side. That's pressure pipe systems, so that's good. You know, you're going to be able to tap into a pressure pipe. Uh, and so I think, you know, the experience in this may not be dead on, but it's relevant. And our engineers have a familiarity with their work down on the peninsula. So I think overall, we're in a good position to recommend to you uh, to uh, award this contract to try net construction. And there's a long lead time on some of these appurtenances. You know, they have to be manufactured. And um, we're proposing not to cut corners, I'll just say. You know, that I, I feel pretty strongly as a design, with my design engineer experience to, in these environments, all of them are in Larkspur, which is salty, uh, tidal influenced soils. Uh, high corrosion, highly corrosive environment. Specify the le the most corrosive, uh, resistant. corrosion resistant materials that are on the market. And that's what we've done with this design. And we're going with stainless steel, mm -hmm. 316 valves. They're the most expensive, but they last by far the longest. And and then, and, and we're committed in our operation and maintenance side to, to exercise these things. You know, you have to get out there and work the valves and maintain the air release valves to make sure that they're, they're functional. So we're committed to that, that we're going to fix them and we're going to maintain them. So I think it's a good story at this point, you know, that we're getting started, uh, you know, starting to make calls to the contractor, but we're uh, asking you to uh, award this contract. And that's it for my presentation. Over. You know, I was looking at this bid summary, and uh, first of all, we should have awarded it to our engineer because they want to do it. <laughs> but the second ah, the big down. item seven, if you look at that, um, oh no, that's the engineer. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Way low on just that item. <laughs> and that's something you buy, isn't it? Your earlier point. Well <laughs> we we should award it to the engineer. Yeah, it's it's not just what you buy, it's really the replacement. Oh, you know, so buy it and put it in. And so that one, that's the the force main fourteen mm -hmm. plug valve. Mm -hmm. That's a tricky place. Yeah, that's in that mass. It's not in the marsh, it's it's in well, the end of South Louisiana. It's at the end of South Louisiana. Yeah, it's, 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 so <laughs> it's a highly congested <laughs> area. Yeah. So actually, and and yeah, it's not this, this 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 there is a story behind that. That that's the end of South Elysia. That's where the dead end is. Yeah. And yeah. That's where a ton of things come together. You know, we have our big Force Main 15 coming through, and then this is the Force Main 14 mm -hmm. and and then there's other utilities. So it's a utility yes. corridor on the north side of Corridor there Creek, and so I think that's a the, the folks did their homework. Is that the one that cuts across the creek? Yes. Was underneath. Yeah. We're going to have to replace that. Well, well funny you should mention that. I we just had a meeting on the IAMP about that very point. As far as doing a force main condition assessment, um, and that that force main uh, came out right at the top for priority for assessing its condition. I'm I'm optimistic, cautiously, because it's an HDPE line, mm -hmm. and you know as we found with the other ones when we did the smart ball condition assessment with the MSA. Those are HDPE mines, and they, they came out good. So, uh, but we're going to still assess it. We need to do our due diligence <coughs> and the IMP to benchmark its condition. So, that that's part of what we're working on right now. Right? I hope we don't have to replace that one. It's right on the bike path. And we no end of, well, that we did the bike. You mean we did some crossing over here. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the bike path around through Larkspur. Well, this is one of those items that we say. The Ranger. Well, you know, <laughs> 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 down there, I'd be like, oh, Ranger. <laughs> uh, are, you, are you entertaining yeah. the motion? I'm going to try to get any, any more board. Uh, your motion? I'll move it. Uh, we just authorize the general manager for review of the project for fiscal year 2019 24 We have a project for Charnet construction in the Roger City. $1,179,500. Second. You got it. Okay. No. <laughs> no on there. Favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I'll we did 13. We did 13 already. On 14? Okay. Discussion and recommendation for future revisions to adopted fiscal year 2019-20 budget position allocations, and I think this is for Felicia. Are you okay? Yes, thank you. Do you want to, <laughs> you want to recall it? I just have a thing. <laughs> so this item was um, presented to the HR committee. Uh, we discussed that there are several uh, vacancies uh, current and expected within the districts, uh, mostly in the engineering slash inspections department. Uh, specifically the technical services manager position. Um, how that happened? Hayden was vacated in July 2019, and our general manager, Steve Morris, assumed a lot of the responsibilities of her um, former uh, position in the organization. Uh, we also have an engineering technician position that's currently vacant uh, as of September of 2019. And we have an anticipated vacancy in the yeah. inspections department, uh, as the board uh, recalls um, giving a proclamation of uh, recognition to Dennis Cavallos uh, for his 24 years of service with the district in his capacity as inspection superintendent. So with those uh, vacancies, <clears throat> staff would like to um, uh, present to the board that there could be some uh, changes in uh, job descriptions, classification titles, uh, no change in overall employee count are being uh, recommended at this time. Um, the staff, the district uh, employs 35 full-time employees. <clears throat> we, are, we will maintain that staffing level. But with those three positions vacant in the general engineering inspections department, there may be a little bit of movement around uh, roles and responsibilities and job titles. Uh, we'll be presenting additional information about those positions in a future um, board meeting, <clears throat> as well as uh, presenting to the board uh, a recommendation to uh, substitute two collection system worker positions with two senior collection system uh, worker positions uh, during the recent MOU negotiation. It was uh, discussed that and also as an outcome of the class of comp study um, to create a, 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 a tiered series <clears throat> in each of our job classifications were appropriate. So for collection system worker, for example, we now have a one, two senior collection system uh, worker series. All of our collection system workers are currently in the class two of that um, uh, tier, tiered uh, series and um, we think there are some opportunities to provide promotional uh, opportunities uh, internally um, with maybe a couple of our existing collection system workers. So those <coughs> are, are uh, all items that will be again you know, presented more formally to the board if there's any budget impacts um, associated with those changes. Those will be discussed again in a future meeting, but staff wanted to give uh, the board an opportunity to um, see that we are uh, recognizing the vacancies and the needs of the district and thinking about how best to, to move forward with that. And we're available to answer any questions. <clears throat> again, this was discussed at length in the HR committee. Touched on a little bit in the finance committee, although because there's no real budget implications at this time, um, <clears throat> it's mostly a, a high level presentation. No decision in meeting. 
No, just no, just the presentation of information. And if, if the board has, uh, like I said, any questions or um, you know would like to make any specific recommendations, that would be so. Will that change um, role, role dis um, like for other jobs. Job reporting structure or yeah. the job descriptions? Yeah. Yeah. So they'll be able possibly to do both. both. Yeah, possibly both. Because again, it's the technical services manager position. Is those you know a lot of that management of the engineering department is now falling under Steve's purview. Um, there might not be necessarily a uh, need for another high-level executive manager mm -hmm. um, in the organization. He's taken on the responsibilities of district engineer, which was what Captain did previously. Um, you know that being said. Uh, there are other high-level high needs, you know, management needs in, in engineering and inspections uh, and in operations and ma maintenance that will want to make sure that we're distributing the, the workload equally. Is there <coughs> any in that work uh, on the line, who work outside in, in the field? field? Yeah. No, we have no collection system women workers. However, and women of color, I'm sorry, in color, we, how is the house are arranged? people that we're hiring of color. We do employ women in the administration Why? department. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Yeah, we do. Um, in the collection system worker uh, field, though, it's interesting. There, I was reading somewhere that, um, yeah, that there are, oh, I think it was actually the city of Nevada just hired, not just hired, but that recently, but within the last year, uh, a public works maintenance worker um, who was a female. And it's a good thing that when they did their um, uh, courtyard renovation a few years back, mm -hmm. they had gender, uh, you know, they had two different locker rooms. Mm -hmm. One locker room wasn't used for two years, literally, but now it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when we go into our new building, we'll have, um, as required by law, uh, gender specific changing facilities. Thank you. In anticipation of that, good. that new hire. Some, some in the future. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, or just to add just uh, a little bit, um, the the breadth of capital work is is now is netting down a little bit. You know, we're, we're we're transitioning as an organization. There's not been much of a throughput for capital production, so we're thinking of that as we review the organizational structure. You know, it was really uh, developed to deliver that type of productivity the last five, six years. Now, we have a, maybe a different horizon to plan for and maybe need a different mix and organizational structure to address it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to kind of answer my question, because it seems we've got two, <coughs> two high-level vacancies here uh, in the engineering, you know, with Catherine and, uh, and the engineering tech. So you're not planning to replace those? Or? Well, the two, are, the two higher level are actually um, the inspection superintendent, Dennis, and, yeah. Ka and Catherine. Yeah, and Dennis. And, and yeah, I think we are uh, planning to replace those in some capacity, okay. yeah. is the answer. And that would be a capacity charge, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we only have. <laughs> to the it depends on how many plumbing It depends on how many plumbing It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Any, okay. Anything else from the board? So, do I hear a motion? There is nothing to do with this. No, no decision. Just a step. I move we go on to item number two. Okay, good. Um, we'll get to it. After, after we're done here, we will adjourn again to closed session. Oh, and our general manager and assistant general manager are welcome to be with us. Um, Steve, do we have the, the phone comment or we'll just use the cell phone? Okay. That thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't need more. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. If, if we need to get it set up. Okay. If it's okay. easy. Okay. If it's easy. Otherwise, we'll just use the phone. Okay. Um, item 15, please. Consideration of adopting a revised salary and benefits resolution number 20 1576 for unrepresented employees of the district. We have to do this. Assistant General, <laughs> Assistant General Newhouse. Yes. Yeah, and we don't have a choice. This is by law. 
Yeah. We wanted to do something different, but we can't. Yes, exactly. And this slide will show you that it's a great opportunity to do a finance meeting earlier this week. Uh, as it turns out, the <coughs> benefits resolution that the board adopted in September of 2019 for unrepresented staff um, included uh, uh, an enhanced retiring medical benefit similar to that that was um, offered and approved by the represented uh, employees. Only <coughs> the unrepresented employees, current the current unrepresented employees, were given the opportunity for a, a one-time irrevocable election to participate or not participate in that particular program. And as it turned out, uh, CalPERS uh, program managers uh, did not approve of that path. And so we unfortunately have to come back to the board um, to ask for a revised salary benefits resolution that requires participation equally by all uh, unrepresented staff. And that's what the board is doing. No other changes were made to the salary and benefits resolution other than that um, now uh, obligatory uh, participation in that one program. And, and, there, and I updated the salary table to the, like, the general manager's new contract. Uh, our new salary. employees that hired after January 1st are just it's part of the employee. They were going to be happy to participate in anyway. Yeah. But the, the, the board. Um, and staff thought that the existing unrepresented employees should have an opportunity to opt in or opt out. Unfortunately, CalPERS and apparently IRS tax law felt to come about that. Board? We have to do it. We got and to do it. That's not up. So are all of these enhanced retirement uh, medical plans um, are not going to increase our Unfunded OPEP. Right. right now. Correct. They're all fully funded. Okay. Yes. All right. I just wanted to state that. That was, that was huge when we did it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just complying with the Cal. Yeah. Of the yeah. And yeah. What we've yeah. always wanted to keep the unrepresented and the represented. Yeah. And as a point of information, the reason that it's important for the board to approve this salary and benefits resolution with this. Uh, this amendment is that um, we're, we're making deductions from people's payroll and we don't, yeah, we don't do that. No, no, we can't do that without the board's authorization. So it's very important as an organization to don't just make that kind of action without it being authorized by the board. I have a quick question on Exhibit B. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, do these salaries include benefits? No. These are just salaries. Okay. I would like to see benefits. The benefits are enumerated within the body of the resolution, and the cost of the benefits is included in the budget. But we don't have per um, job classification of each person what benefits were. Well, it costs. It varies depending on whether they have a dependent on them. <coughs> exactly. Such. I mean, it would be by individual, which you are able to look up online for public employees. Is mm -hmm. that is that sanitary? Uh, transparent. Transparent. California yeah. does Here's provide yeah. that that data. Mm -hmm. Yes. In some, if, if you have the title, the person's title, you can look it up online or their name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would vary depending on whether people are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, That's a great it's point. It's more gentlest calories than I knew. Okay. There's several about yeah. Kelly's in there. Oh, there are. Oh, okay. yeah. no, it goes by. It goes by the district. No, do we? I just went out for a fire department. I could not find it by the name. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's by the position. It's right. not by the person's name. Right. But, the, but the benefits are laid out in the resolution. I mean, they're, 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 they're enumerated. So, for example, if I, again, if I can, so a good example would be on page 147 of the packet, item 10 in the resolution of the wellness program. And so there's a the annual reimbursement of up to $500 per district employee for participation in the wellness program. But they have to opt in. Right. So <laughs> well, they have to provide a receipt. They have to exercise. They have to exercise. They have to exercise. Yeah. They have to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a letter down there at the bottom of page 
no page number. Well, exhibit B. Exhibit B. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have, right at the bottom, we don't have a finance or business services manager, do we? Well, we do. That's me. No, it's a... Under the old title. And, and the assistant general manager. I've had two job descriptions. Okay, so that's your title. I don't know if right. yeah. There's an overlap. I thought we changed that title a little bit. It used to be business and administrative services manager, oh, okay. and we changed it to finance okay. and We adopt the revised salary and benefits resolution number 20-1576 for unrepresented employees of the district. Second. Anybody? Uh, second, yes. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. <coughs> well, I'm sorry. Was it? She abstained. Okay, abstained. Abstain. So four eyes, one abstain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Monthly operations and maintenance metric, metrics report. Looks great. Uh, one spill, yeah. one small, minor spill. Where was that uh, tiny spill? Uh, 21 Evergreen, Penfield. Uh, the ground shifted, sewage came out of the ground. So it was a structural defect. It was patched immediately by the repair crew. Um, Is that where it's pretty steep? Um, yeah, it's got great, definitely. <laughs> And then a uh, report on human, just to move it over. Anybody got any comments? Okay, the next meeting will be on March 18th at 5 p.m. And at the Central Marin Police Authority, Community Room, 250 Doherty, Oxford, California. Now we're going to close meeting. Close session. <laughs>